Well, a good Tuesday morning. I hope you're having a good day today. And uh, I want to share a, a thought or two uh, real quick with you out of uh, the book of Genesis. Um, in Genesis chapter 3, uh, you have uh, the sin of Adam and Eve. And because of that sin, at the very end of the chapter, God drives out the man and, uh, and the woman. He places them at the east of the Garden of Eden. And uh, uh, there are cherubims there and a flaming sword, uh, which turned uh, every way to keep the way of the Tree of Life. So, so they, because of their sin, uh, have been expelled from the Garden and uh, no longer have access to, to that place. And uh, uh, they've lost that intimate fellowship with the Lord. In chapter 4, it begins where uh, where Adam and Eve have two sons. They have a son named Cain, and uh, then they have a son named Abel. And uh, the boys have uh, have varying occupations. Uh, Abel is a keeper of sheep, uh, while Cain, uh, he is a tiller of the ground. And so, uh, so one is basically a rancher, the other is a farmer. And uh, it goes on to tell us that in the process of time, in verse 3, I came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord, and Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock, of the fat thereof. Uh, and when they bring these offerings of, of what they've labored and worked uh, to present unto the Lord, uh, we find out in verse 4, the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. Um, God received the offering of Abel, but he rejects the offering of Cain. Uh, it's not recorded in Scripture, but obviously uh, God had communicated something unto them about what he expected, what he anticipated, and, and uh, because he goes on to talk about, uh, about that reality uh, just beyond that. Uh, but, but, but Cain responds uh, negatively because his offer was rejected. And uh, it says he was very wroth. Uh, his countenance fell. And the Lord says unto Cain, why are you angry? Why are you wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? What's wrong? And, and then God says to him, If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. Well, obviously, he had to know what well was for God to question him about it. Um, if he doesn't know, if he doesn't know the parameters, if he doesn't know the rules, how can you know what's well and what's not? And so so God's basically chiding him, saying, listen, if you'd have done what was right, I'd have accepted it. But you didn't do what was right. Uh, you, you ignored uh, what, what instruction you'd been given. And, uh, and that's going to lead to greater sin. You've got a spirit of resistance, a spirit of rebellion. You're not, you're not doing what you know as well. And uh, that's going to lead you to the wrong places. Well, uh, it escalates. Uh, that, that sin escalates. And ultimately, uh, Cain uh, kills his brother Abel. And, and, and then you find in verse 10 uh, that God again questions Cain after he's killed Abel and tried to conceal uh, what he's done. He says, Why, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And, and, and so here what you have in, in this, this chapter uh, you, you discover really the, the first prayer from earth to heaven. And uh, it doesn't come from a person. Uh, it, it, it comes from the ground. It comes from a pool of blood uh, in the ground. And this pool of blood, it, it declares Cain's, Cain's sin. It declares his, his sinful deed. Uh, every, every drop of that blood is, is proclaiming the sinful act. It's revealing the, the wicked heart uh, of Cain. And is crying out for justice, is crying out uh, for punishment. Uh, the, the reality is our sin uh, basically does the same thing. Our transgressions, they're, they're, they're irrefutable evidence of our sinful state. They reveal the wickedness of our heart. Uh, our, our guilt requires us to come to God for salvation. And, uh, and then also, uh, we, when we find that salvation, then we can, uh, we can come to God for help. We can come to God for, uh, for direction. Uh, I'm grateful that God doesn't allow us to flounder hopelessly, uh, that he provides a means, for, uh, a means for salvation, a way to deal with, uh, with our sin to gain access unto him. He offered it into, unto Cain. Uh, he said, Cain, listen, if you'll, if you'll do right, then, uh, then everything will be okay. If you'll do right, I, I'll receive. I'll, I'll have respect under your offering. 
Uh, so he offered it unto Cain. Uh, the problem is that, uh, that Cain rejected it. Uh, Cain came with an, with an arrogant heart. He wasn't willing to, uh, to come to God. And, and in all reality, God could have washed his hands uh, of Cain. But that's not what God does at all. Uh, in love, he tenderly speaks to him. And he says, listen, why are you angry? Why are you downcast? If you do what's right, uh, you'll be accepted. If you don't do what's right, sin's crouching at your door. It's, it's desiring to have you. You've got to rule over your sin. And so God's, God's response, it demonstrates his, his patience that he extends towards every one of us, not wanting anyone to perish, uh, but that all should come uh, to repentance. But on the flip side of that, while, while Abel's blood... Uh, accused and condemned, while, while the blood in the ground, uh, that, that sin is accusing and condemning uh, the act of Cain, uh, there's another interesting passage that ties in with it in Hebrews chapter 12. And, and in Hebrews chapter 12, um, the author of Hebrews is speaking to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. And, and, and so the blood of Abel is, is, is showing the condemnation. It's showing the sin, the wickedness of, of his brother Cain. It's crying out for justice. It's, it's crying out in accusation. It's crying out in condemnation. But Jesus' blood isn't crying out for accusation or condemnation the blood of Jesus was for forgiveness and restoration. Uh, and, and, and so he talks about the, uh, the blood of Christ that, uh, that was shed for us, that, that covers us, that, that, that blood that gives us, gives us the forgiveness of our sins that also provides unlimited access unto the Father. Uh, just as the sin of Adam and Eve had expelled them from the garden, had separated them uh, from, from God, and, and just as the sin of Cain had taken him out of favor from God. He, he didn't have access unto the Lord in, in the sense that he didn't have salvation or forgiveness. He was condemned and accused by that blood. Well, the blood of Christ, it, it brings us unto God. It brings restoration. It brings forgiveness. And, and, and it enables us uh, to have fellowship uh, with the Lord. And uh, uh, the, the sad reality is that Cain rejected God's grace-filled offer of salvation. And because of that, he lived as a wanderer. He lived as a, as a fugitive. He was, he was fearful of, of men. He was banished from God's presence forever. Uh, but our, our sin, it stood between us and God. And yet, and yet, just as God promised Adam and Eve in, back in Genesis 3.15, uh, he sent a sacrifice. And that sacrifice came to pay the penalty for our sins, his son, Jesus Christ. And when Jesus died on the cross, the perfect one for the imperfect ones, the sinless one, for the sinful ones. He made a way for us to have a relationship with God. And Jesus' blood crying out from the cross saved us from the penalty of sin that leads ultimately to eternal death, to, to separation from God in hell. But this same blood allows us to return again and again and again to our Father God for restoration whenever we sin against him. And so you have the blood of Cain, or the blood of Abel, excuse me, was crying out against the sins of Cain. It was, it was crying out uh, accusing and condemning. But then you have the blood of Christ from the cross that's crying out for forgiveness and restoration. And I'm grateful, I'm grateful uh, that even though I have my sins that cried out for, uh, for, uh, for accusation and condemnation, I'm grateful that I can be covered by the blood of Christ and by that blood, I'm forgiven, I'm restored, and I have access unto the Father. I come to him through his son, Jesus Christ. What a glorious truth uh, that we have before us today. Father, you're so good to us, and we thank you for your wonderful love. Thank you for your son who came and took our place on the cross. He, he took our sins, nailed them to the cross. He paid the penalty for our sins, offers unto us uh, eternal life, uh, abundant life. Uh, he offers us unto us spiritual life. And, and I'm grateful, Lord, that uh, you have given us that opportunity. Thank you for the grace uh, that's enabled us to take advantage of that opportunity. Thank you, Lord, for what we have in you. And God, I do pray uh, that you just help us to recognize that we are, uh, we were guilty. 
Uh, Lord, we are guilty. And yet, Lord, you forgave us not because of, of the amends that we made, but because of the amends that you made and our trust and our faith in you. And, and Lord, uh, if, if, we'll, if we'll follow you faithfully, Lord, if we'll, if we'll keep a clean account, Lord, we have unlimited access unto you. Lord, help us to recognize that sin does indeed hinder our prayer. It separates us. It separated Adam and Eve. It separated Cain, it separated Cain from you. Uh, but Lord, I'm grateful that your blood restores. And God, you made a way uh, where we have access unto you. So Lord, help us to, uh, to apply the blood unto our lives. And uh, Lord, help us to uh, not only have favor with you, but Lord, I pray we'd enjoy sweet fellowship with you. For we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you. hope you have a great day and uh, uh, rejoice in the reality uh, that because of the sacrifice of Christ, we have instant access unto the Father. God bless you. The Lord loves you. So do we.